281, 281, 279. Uh, sorry for the bad handwriting. Basically made peak pork at 2,500. Did I say peak pork? Man, I think I'm hungry. <laughs> I think it made peak torque at uh, 2,500 to 3,000 RPMs. And uh, as the fuel got really, really rich. All right, so I got the new Brian Tooley Racing Truck Norris Camshaft. I got it installed yesterday in a high volume oil pump along with the um, LS3, LS6 springs or whatever. Cause it is, it's still a low lift cam. So it can uh, handle just LS3 springs. And what's interesting about this cam is that it makes more low and mid range power than any of the BTR truck cams. It makes more low and mid range torque and horsepower than the stage one, two, three, and four. The four does make just a couple more horsepower like in the extremely high RPM, like like 55, 6,000 RPM, but the truck Norris cam makes more power everywhere else. So I, to me, I think this is the best all around performance cam for a truck. Cause trucks do need the extra help to get up and go. They are big and heavy after all. So they need the torque that this truck Norris cam is gonna provide. So today I'm gonna be doing some tuning. I've got like part throttle and cruising kind of um, roughed in a little bit, but I'm gonna be trying to get, get it good enough to do a wide open throttle pull. Uh, this is still only a, it's a cam only truck, uh, no headers, no colder intake, it's literally cam only. So it's going to be interesting to see what a cam only 5.3 can do um, with a truck Norris cam, probably the best cam on the market right now for a Silverado. Uh, yeah, let's, let's get at it. All right, we're going to go ahead and make our first little pull and see how far off we are in the AFR. I am expecting it to be uh, lean before I had an AFR of around 12.6 was my target because I liked a little bit of uh, extra fuel um, to make the most torque. Uh, so yeah, let's see. Uh, this probably gonna be in the thirteens, I would assume, mid thirteens. Let's see. I'm gonna go down like a low, low, like a ten mile an hour first gear roll. Let's go. I definitely need to raise these shift limits. This cam definitely wants to rev out. That has a lot more top end, that is for sure. Let's pull over and take a look at our uh, AFR data log and see how far off we are. So yeah, from about 2,400 RPMs on up, it starts to lean out. Uh, it's wanting about 8% more fuel up at 5,600 RPMs. So that tells me as I add fuel, it's just gonna add more and more power throughout the rev range. It's wanting a lot more fuel. Let's see, at... Um, This is our RPM and air fuel ratio. So before it was floating around 12.5, 12.6, cause that's where it liked it for the most power. And in the higher RPMs, it leans out to 13.5. So this thing definitely wants more fuel. Let's get this thing tuned up so that the fuel ratio is closer to the target and see how much power can squeeze out of this truck. Okay, so I made another pull. But as you can see, we're getting closer. These are my, this is basically the percentage that I'm off of my target AFR. And again, I'm targeting 12.6. As you can see there, that's my actual 12.6. My target is, um, let's see, at this point in the map, I was part throttle, let's go wide open. And there, 12.6 is my commanded. Um, so anyways, yeah, it tells me if I'm plus or minus, you know, uh, that 12.6 AFR mark. So anyways, I get on it at, 12, at 2400 RPMs. And I believe my peak torque before was like 331. So I'm gonna kind of, scroll through here you know let me uh, move this so you can see the rpms let's take a look at our torque 335 already at 2400 rpms 2500 i'm making more torque than before and my peak torque before was around 2900 so this is actually making more torque at a lower rpm 336 342 345 it's increasing 3200 so it's making more torque lower and uh it's taking it out a lot farther 351 the peak torque was at 3200 let's see 351 wow 351 so that's an increase it's uh 20 foot pounds more than before and this isn't this isn't like an exact measurement by the way this is just kind of a ballpark figure it's just kind of a tool to go off of it's uh better than having nothing to read uh be, you know before and after so I'm, I'm kind of going off of this and then i'm also going to use my draggy uh, quarter mile uh timer and then do like a 
a full quarter mile pass to see the difference before and after. And th this isn't even fully tuned. It's just I'm roughing it in right now. As you can see, the AFR right there is 13.3 at 5600. I also extended my shift points. I'm revving it down to 6,000 RPM now, which it is leaning out up to 6,000 RPM by 5%. So again, I'm going to throw in a little bit more fuel. It's, it, and this 24%, that cannot be true. Sometimes there's like a little anomalies. So when I go into my fuel table, uh, there's no reason why it should have uh, leaned out that much. So I, I don't believe that's accurate. It was just like a little blip. Anyways, I'm going to throw in a, a little bit more fuel, make another pass, and um, check out the timing. I like to get the air fuel ratio right and then uh, work on the timing. And then I'm going to get it close. I'm going to get it where I call it good. And then I'm going to go ahead and make a quarter mile pass, like I said, with the drag gap and see if I can improve on that 15.9 at 87 mile an hour bone stock time that I put down. Uh, anyways, let me uh, get back to it, make another pass, and see where we stand. This will be pass number three. I missed over pass two, but this is the third pass. Let's go. Sorry, I got the AC blast. It's actually getting kind of hot today. But as you can see, with each pull I make, the percentages get closer and closer to zero. And every once in a while, you have like an anomaly like that. I don't, like I said, I don't believe these little blips are accurate because when I look at my fuel table, it's nice and consistent. But I do see that it definitely still wants more fuel up top, 4,400 up to uh, six grand. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, it's, it's about, so, so when I see percentage here, I add half that percentage to the fuel table because I don't want to do too much or too little. You know, it's, it's all about baby steps, you know, increments. You want to slowly dial it in. You don't want to overshoot or do too much. Um, anyway, that's just the way I like to do it. Yeah, 6% at a 6,000 RPM. So I guess we can go ahead and take a look at our torque to see what, what that's looking like. So this is our RPM right here. That's the torque, this is RPM. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll. 328, 330. Uh, check this out guys. As my AFR slowly gets more and more dialed in, you can see a lot of the percentages down there or within 1%, they're like 0 0.10, 0 0.58, 0 0.11, uh, and so on. They're, they're slowly getting to uh, sync up with the commanded AFR of 12.6. Um, and my torque is increasing, 359 foot-pounds. Um, I want to say we left off at 331. With the, After I tuned it, I went from like 300 foot-pounds to 331. And then with this uh, Truck Norris Cam, 359. So I almost picked up an additional 30 foot pounds of torque. Uh, so we're about 60 foot pounds over the factory. Wow, well, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. So yeah, we picked up almost 60 foot pounds from the from the factory. So yeah, we picked up almost 60 foot pounds uh, from beginning when the truck was bone stock. Uh, that's pretty impressive. I would say 30 foot pounds with the tune and another 30 foot pounds with this cam. And I can still find tune it a little bit and i'm going to throw some timing and i'm sure i can squeeze that even more torque um i really like that it even shows delivered engine torque because it's a great tool to kind of know what you're doing if the adjustments you're making are helping or hurting uh the overall performance um so yeah this is my a4 error and everything's looking pretty good I'm, I'm pretty happy so far um a lot of it is like one two percent off i've got a couple cells that are Need a little bit of love, but for the most part, this tune is getting dialed in pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and fire, fire it up. I adjusted the idle to make it sound um, smoother, I guess, not so choppy. I'm gonna go ahead and... So I'm gonna go ahead and go outside and show you the idle. Because there's, there's an adjustment I make to make it choppy, and I kind of took that away to smooth it out. So now it's it's more lopy versus like choppy, I guess I, I'd call this more of a lopy idle.
like the way it sounds. I really like the way it performs. It didn't lose any low end torque at all. Like this is a cam that's perfectly fine with the uh, stock torque converter. You don't have to gear it down real low. Um, this truck is on, on factory converter, factory gears, and it gets up and goes just fine. Um, so this cam is a freaking awesome all around performer. I would highly recommend it. I'm gonna uh, continue fine tuning it off camera and uh, squeeze out some more power because the timing is kind of conservative. I think I'm only, uh, yeah, like, so what was I was just saying, the, the timing's kind of conservative. I could probably throw in a couple more degrees. Uh, right now, it's, that's 22 degrees. Um, so after this, I'm actually changing my exhaust system. That's probably gonna be one of the next videos. I'm gonna go from this Flowmaster 10 series because the drone and the rasp is a little bit obnoxious for a daily driver. If it wasn't something I would drive every day with like the kids in the back seat and stuff, it'd be fine. But I do, I can't even, I can't even have a conversation with my kids. So I'm going from this Flowmaster muffler to a Magnaflow. Uh, that'll probably be the next video. I'm gonna do like Flowmaster versus Magnaflow. I like the Magnaflow, they had different sizes to choose from, you know, like the, the overall size, the body size of the muffler itself. You can get smaller, the smaller the muffler, the louder it is. You can get a larger muffler to make it quieter. I'm starting off with a smaller one. Um, if it's too loud, I can always step it up, get a bigger Magnaflow. Anyways, that's enough talking. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you liked it. Later. All right, I know I said that was the end, but it cooled down quite a bit. The sun's going down. I threw in some more aggressive timing. So I'm gonna see if I can't break over 360 foot pounds. I think the last time I did a pull, it was like 358, 359 foot pounds. So uh, yeah, this will be the, the final, the last and final pull. Um, I don't think I can get to squeeze any more power out of the truck after this pull. I think this is it, this is all she's got. So uh, let's see what it does. Here we go from a stop. Let's do it. Man, it really screams when it picks up RPM, but I love that this cam doesn't need a converter to get up and go. Cause like some other bigger cams just make it a dog off the line. Like they're, they hardly want to take off. need that 3200 stall uh 410 411 gear just to get going but this this cam makes a lot of low-end torque it still gets up and goes i really uh i'm really enjoying this cam and what do you know look at that i'm gonna scroll through the rpm look at that torque 356 360 we had 360 foot pounds at 30 3500 rpms and let, I'm gonna remind you, I started off with 300 foot pounds uh, when this truck was stock. Uh, ca uh, stock to cam only, 60 foot pounds of torque. I've added on to this uh, old Chevy.